There okay. we go. Now, do you want to go through these or just, no, let's just Well, I don't know. What, what does everybody want to do? Take them one at a time or go through them all first? Just go through them. I'll tell you what. We'll just go through them as we go through them. That saves time. Yeah. You never know how many comments we're going to get. So. Okay. This so is then, pictorial, and this is number 101, Atlanta Airport. I loved the leading lines on this. I thought they were so strong and so compelling to draw you so far in. And there was a lot of symmetry and repeating with, like they were almost all the same size in the spokes. My one problem with it was when I got to the focal point, when I got to the middle of the screen, I was a little confused as to what I was actually looking at, but otherwise I thought it was a really, really strong creative image. Who's the maker? Andy Manchester. Well done. Nice job. Yeah, so Andy's not at the meeting right now, so he, he isn't available to make comments. And what was the score? Oh, I'm sorry, uh, 23. And that was Came in second story. place. Which second place? place, second place, second place. There you go. Nice. That's all right, I gotta, I gotta remember how to. I gotta remember how to do all this. That's pretty good for his first uh, ever entry, isn't it? Second place. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's because he got high scores, man. Okay, this one uh, three one hundred two Navajo totems. Yeah, this picture is great. Uh, the colors, how the shadows were, it, and the with the sky, the color, the way it is made the pillars pop. And there's not much else you can do. The only thing that would have been cool is if you see somebody in a, you know, somewhere in the picture. But other than that, I, I don't know what else to do different. You have to look really, really hard. Yeah. Oh, is well, there really somebody in there? I, I think this is a very striking image with these spires of rock sticking up. Yeah. The fact that it's, uh, that it's side lit from the right really creates some really nice contrast in those and those I, rocks. I really liked how they did with the, the shadows down there in the kind of the standish area and they're they're ripply. That was really cool capture. Yeah, the ripple sand. Yeah. Yeah, you know, this is off by the sand dunes. Um came in third place. It scored 22 and it's mine. Excellent, John. Yeah, very nice job, John. Nice one. This is back in the backside of uh Monument Valley in the restricted area. <laughs> Nice yeah. image. You get what you pay for, right? Yes, I did. Oh, man, I'll tell you what. It was beautiful back there. Mm -hmm. Okay, but, number 103, paintball okay. target. Well, this is a beautiful shot of this buck here. It looks looking straight at the camera. It's got a nice rack there. It's got, I, I can't tell if that's caked on mud or if that, I thought it, last night when I was looking at it that it was snow. But I, I don't see any snow anyplace else. So it looks like it's just maybe he's been rolling in the dust or something, and I, you know, to get the ticks and fleas and stuff off. And he's, and uh, that's why that stuff is sticking to his fur there. But it's really nice. I like the composition, but the head and the antlers kind of up toward the upper left there. Um, you can see the fur and the ears there. You can tell it's winter. He's got that thick fur on him. Um, Anyway, guys, this is a great wildlife shot. And I'd say everything about it, I think most of it's in focus. Well, the face is in focus, the front's in focus. Maybe toward the back, it's a little bit out of focus. Um, and that's just fine. Um, what I'd like to see, I wish I could see the lower legs and the hooves on this. And I think that that would have made it a little bit better. But uh, other than that, that's really tremendous. A great shot of this buck. Who is the maker? Nicker is Jack Smith and scored a 20. I think it, that's why it's called paintball. I think it's, I don't know whether it's mud or what, but. Yeah, yeah. Great shot. It kind Jack. of looks like it's been hit with paint. Excellent. <laughs> cool. His nose is shiny. Where is that, Jack? Did you say, did you say yeah. where is it? What is it that's on the deer? Yeah. That... Well, that's why I called it paintball. Uh, target because I just I don't know whether it's true or not, but it's almost like uh, they were shooting the deer with paintball guns. 
Yeah, that's what it looks like. Yeah, yeah. stuck to him. Yeah. Very thinking. cool image. Yeah, great. Is it really snow though, Jack? <laughs> no, <laughs> no. That's that's uh, when I was heading to Lost Maples State Park. You know, the ranch land before you get and go go up over the hills. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. And there he was, and I didn't know what what why he was looking the way he was, but that's that's what I'm assuming. Maybe they let people go out there with paintball guns or something. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> All right, let's see. What's this one? Oh, this is called Village Under the Mountain, 104. This is a great, great landscape shot with a mountain in the background, and you've got the shadows and the definitions and the blue skies, and you've got the village in the foreground that's got a lot of definition. The one thing that I find distracting are the limbs in the upper left corner. Um, I get trying to frame it, but I find that with having just that little bit, it's just taking my eye away from the rest of the great composition. Who's the maker? This is Patrick Murray. Yeah, I thought it was so. Honorable I mention. It was honorable mention, scored at 21. Nice job. Yeah, I agree with you, Donna, on that. I thought those little things hanging down from the top were just... <laughs> If the mountain was a little bit yeah. lower and there was more space between the mountain and those, and there were more of them, maybe it would be kind of a framing, a framing effect. But uh, I agree with you. I think they're somewhat distracting. But, I guess you could have uh, gotten, done a content aware bill or something on it. To, yeah. It's, mm, beautiful, yeah. Beautiful, it's a beautiful shot. My goodness. Own it out or somehow without, but I don't know if that usually, I don't like cloning skies because it messes them up. Anyway, it's cool, it's cool image. Uh, let's see. Sorry for the, I'm going to find what's the next one. So whose image was this? Pictorial. I was somewhere, I don't know, that's probably down in Chile or uh, where, is, where is he? Peru, isn't it? He's Peru, is that what it is? Yeah. yeah. The, I think that's, that's the mountain he always takes pictures of. This one is, I don't know, Monahan Sand Hills. Oh, yeah, they're, they're out there uh, going towards the Guadalupe Mountains. Okay. Wow. Is it, Charles? Oh, is this for me to do? Well, yeah. Is, is it your picture? No, it's not my picture. Oh, okay. Go ahead. Oh, okay. <laughs> Sorry. Um, Let's see. Do uh, I made notes from last night. So this one I really liked. It had, it seemed really creative. You kind of had a little story of all the little bugs in there. I think I could even see a drop of water or something in there. And what striked me is very unique on this image is how with the harsh sun in the background and still getting it where it, it's kind of distracting, but not enough. It's more creative, wow. I would say. Um, about the only thing, <laughs> the only thing I would have tried to do a little bit was see if I can lower the, the starburst, a little brightness, just a smidge. So I'd focus more on one, on both of those sunflowers. But I, for me, it checked off most of the boxes for, for judging it. Yeah, so that, Cause I was thinking the starburst is a little over. Yeah. Exposed. Like the, it's a bit the center of it is. It's a bit too. I put it, mm -hmm. and I mean, but it's still, it's just, I don't know, it's a hard, I, I try to do that shot and it's hard to get. <laughs> I thought the starburst, the sun made a great replica of the sunflower, so it kind of made a triangle. Oh, yeah. Well, it does. Yeah. That's kind of cool. But... The well, sunflowers themselves, themselves are in great focus. And the edges are mm -hmm. sharp, and you can see the little veins that parallel out to the tips. Uh, that's really sharp. And, and the insects are sharp also. And the whole background's blurry. That's, that was cool. Yes, yeah, nicely blurred. Did we get a score? Well, the score was uh, 22, rescored at a 21, and it's Mr. Peter Forzak. <laughs> nice job.
Thank you. I, I agree about the sun making that triangle. Yeah, yeah. I think that makes it very interesting. It's a very old image captured with a 12 megapixel uh, Pentex. So it actually was all done in camera. <clears throat> oh, nice. Did you mean for the sun to mirror the sunflowers? I did. I I shot it at you know f sixteen to be able to get the star pattern from there. Yeah. Oh, really? Wow! And you still got all those those grasses back there out of focus. Yeah. Wow. Like you must be pretty close to the flowers then. Very close. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that's a really good one. I liked it. <laughs> <laughs> Let dragonfly. Okay, somebody else had to take this one. Uh, since it's my turn, I'll take this one. I thought this was a great placement of the dragonfly in the upper third using the good rule of third to put a subject there. I liked how the grasses came up and led your eye to the dragonfly and the way the sun was on it that you had shading to give it some contrast. My my one thing was I would like to see the wings on the right side just a little bit more in focus. The the ones on the left look more in focus to me than the ones on the right. Otherwise, it's just a great capture with the sun on it. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to assume that the maker is Steve. <laughs> Very good. <laughs> oh, powers of deduction. <laughs> Steve Manchester it Steve? scored a 20. I thought Steve did the uh, the airport thing, tunnel. That was his son. No, that, that, that oh, was Andy. okay, okay, okay. So that was Andy Manchester. Okay. Yeah. I see. Oh. Yeah. Thanks. Yeah. We were, just, we were walking around a little small lake there, and these dragonflies were just hanging out there. So it was nice. Blurred background. And anyway, it just looked nice. Okay, so so why don't I take this one? Okay. And then Charles, you pile take up. the next one. All right. It's called the pile up. Sorry, I'm sorry, what's it called? Pile up. <laughs> Iowa? Pile up. Pile of bicycles. Up. Okay. Pile up. Right. Okay. Well, there's a lot yeah, to look at here. Question. Everything is <laughs> so sharp and the detail is there. Um, some nice bright colors. Um, there's that um the mural back there, offset by the by the tangle of bicycles and all the lines and colors that are there. Uh, the bricks, very sharp. Leading lights taking you all the way back to the mural. And then a mural is framed by that kind of stone, perhaps limestone around it there. Um, let's see. I had a hard time with this last night. I think the main thing that I like about it is the detail. It just invites your eye to just look around at everything and and uh, just kind of enjoy the detail. Um, as far as composition is concerned, I'm uh, again I'm, I'm not I'm not sure what to make of it. I'm not sure what what's the subject uh, here of what that my eyes should be led to or should focus on. So I'm so I'm anyway I'm not sure what quite to say about that except that I I I think maybe. I don't know. I don't know what to say. Just that I can't find something for my eye to rest on there, as as the main subject. Oh, who's uh, otherwise? Or is I, I love the detail. Who's the maker? Trish Stone, twenty four, first place. First place. Way to go, Trish. Very nice, Trish. Very nice. Trish, I have well, a just, question. Just on the mural, sure. man. I have a question for you. When I looked at this. I thought it, I, I really liked this a lot. What I looked at is I saw the bikes and then I looked at the mural and all the people leaving. And I kind of had this story of people riding the bikes and they just left them and how the bicycle integrated with the mural in kind of a story. And I don't know if you did that on purpose or if it was just my active imagination. Because then you got the one guy looking back at the bicycles, like, oh, look what we did. We just dumped all our bikes and walked off. No, I did. That's exactly it. I just thought, OK, there's this massive pile of bikes sort of jumbled together in this alleyway. This is in Ghent. And, uh -huh. and then you see this mural. Everybody's just kind of leaving. That's exactly what I thought when I saw okay. it. They all look like they just sort of abandoned their bikes there. 
Well, you, so I got, I got it. I you, thought it was a great did, story. Donna, so that's the story. Yeah. Um, <laughs> and here I it's historic. It. You know, it looks like it looks like a European bike shop. And I don't know what the, I can't really read the signs on the side, but that's a roll up door that somebody painted over and all these mm -hmm. bikes are sitting out here probably waiting for repair or whatever to go into this bike shop. So mm -hmm. yeah, I, I was know. drawn to the I was drawn to the mural because the yeah. bikes lead you to the mural to to make the decision that it's a bike shop. Mm. That's be. what I said. It could That's be. I, yeah, no, it was, I, I got, this, I got the story. To me. I guess I needed a little more imagination. <laughs> well, I don't. Well, I don't know what that says about me, but I, I, I got. Yeah, that's what I saw. Oh, good eye. Good imagination. Eye. Imagination has to go to the to the bicycle storage racks in Amsterdam that are oh, three yeah. story high, three story high parking lots, and they're just bike after bike after mm -hmm. bike, rows upon rows. <laughs> Yeah, so, really, uh, that's what it reminded me of. Well done, Trish. Thank Very you. Nice. Yeah. Hey, Charles. Old church. <laughs> nah, I liked this one, and it was hard for me to judge it because it has all the leading lines. It has everything is just in focus. Has great shadows. To me, it tells a story, or at least an imaginative story. Um, there's things to keep me interested in it. The composition was great. Um, so I don't know. I don't, I don't honestly know what else you could do to make this picture any better. I love the fact that you got lower down to the ground as well. There's a lot of these pictures that you see for the painted churches are always eye level and it's just not the same when you get lower. Other than that, nothing bad to say on this one. This is Mr. Robert Moreno. Scored a 22, rescored a 20. Nice job, Robert. Nice job, Robert. Nice job. This Thank is you. perfectly symmetrical, Robert. Yeah. Perfect. You know, that, I, think, I, I think all the painted churches are have the fantastic leading lines, mm -hmm. uh, let alone the colors. And they lead you to the altar. Leading lines leading down to where the because that's the whole focus is the altar. That's where it all leads. You. <laughs> hey Robert. Yes. This, did you use a lens profile or do any correction to make it more, um, everything more vertical? One, I think uh, when I imported to Lightroom, it's like automatic. You did it? If, okay. if there was anything, because I didn't, on this one, I don't think I straightened anything. Uh, oh. I think it's just automatic. Oh, uh, really so, good. Very straight. Yeah, to get those side pillars like that straight. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Amazing. Well, um, yeah, I think we, I used it uh, uh, on the previous, uh, some of the windows were askew and John showed me the little magic in Lightroom just to straighten it. So but, uh, <laughs> this one was just, just as it was. Oh, nice. Uh, yeah, and your low, um, your low um, point of view there is a, a really nice touch also, Robert. Yeah, I think uh, we all did the tripod shot down low at the middle. This was our little trip, Trish and John. I joined them uh, to the painted churches. We had a good time that day. We did. Yeah, we had more fun on merry-go-round than we did in the churches, though. <laughs> <laughs> What's the highlight? Monochrome. Monochrome, monochrome, monochrome. Change sheets. Oh. Okay, I think we're back to you, oh, Donna. Okay. <laughs> is a great caption of a, a it just tells the story of and it's also kind of hard to watch because you just know what's coming i like how it's backlit it adds to the drama you've got a little bit of the sun rays from the left corner coming down you've got the dust that's kicked up that also gives it that sense of story and sense of place and with the guy's hands out it's just it really just causes you to hold your breath. And I just, I think it's a great capture. Who's the maker? Uh, Patrick Murray, score of 21. Mm -hmm. You have to excuse me a second. Great action shot. Yeah, this is awesome, yeah. Yeah, and yeah. a great uh, photojournalism. Yeah, I mean. I don't want that, dang it, John. It's like, here. Wow. I'm, try I'm, trying to, I'm trying to do something. 
Well, I like the way the sun's coming it. through the dust. The dust is rising from the action. And yeah, I ain't worried about it. Dusty it arena, off. perhaps. And that man on the right is, uh, you think, he would like to do something, but probably can't do anything. <laughs> I like that the bull's getting his due, man. I mean, he's probably on the other end of the, on the receiving end of this stuff, usually. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Is there things on the backside? Oh, the are those the, the picks? Are they from the picador? I, yeah. I didn't see those last night. I, I wondered what those were. Yeah. Mm. I'm pretty sure he felt that in the morning. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah when he woke up in the hospital, you know. Yeah. More feet and more off. <laughs> Awesome pick. Awesome pick. I like mm -hmm. it. Did anybody else notice he's wearing a BMW hat, though? <laughs> yeah, yeah, look at that. Oh, yeah. You pointed that out last night, too, didn't you? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's just, I don't know what about that. A white BMW hat. <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah. All right. Okay. Yeah, I'm like always one. Okay, I'm sorry. Go ahead. Good oh, job. This one is called Disinterested. <laughs> Charles. or sleep whichever i'm up all right well another one that's uh, let me turn my camera another one that's like absolutely amazing like this one with the focus of how they have the lion in great detail but the little girl i'm assuming is out of focus and she's just staring it makes me wonder it's like she can just reach out and pet this lion um, barely even could tell it's through a piece of glass. That, that part's absolutely incredible. They captured that. One thing for a monochrome, in my opinion, would be, I would like to see a little more black. Like there's only like kind of the one black spot on the right side, but it seems a little bit lighter. And I would, I like to see more uh, contrast of that black to white or gray scales. Other than that, it's an, it's an excellent capture. I would print it and hang it on my wall. Who's the maker? Zach Smith, it scored a 22 and had to, it tied with a couple others and went out for rescore and scored a 21. I love it. Yeah, That's it's awesome, time. Jack. It's a great, great story. Great detail. I can't believe you didn't get much of the reflection at all from the piece of glass. Jack, is that is that a, a girl or is that a woman on the left there? An adult? Uh, That's a little girl. Little girl, okay. Yeah, the, and, I, I was uh, surprised how little reflection there was there, too. So I was pleased how well that lion looks with the girl on the side. Yeah, that's uh, a great was, image. Where was, was this, Jeff? San Antonio Zoo? San Antonio. Really? really? Um, wow. I don't think he's that close to the glass. He must have used a big lens. <laughs> well, you know what? Maybe it wasn't San Antonio. Now I think about it. I've been to a lot of zoos. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's fun to go to zoos to practice mm -hmm. yeah. oh, sure. oh. Hey. Onward. oh wow this one is llama start okay llama start color <laughs> what really great contrast me. what great contrast with this llama with the the fur you can see all of the you can almost count the little hairs in the fur there and this guy, this guy's got personality in there. He's got his hair kind of mussed up there, and his ears are sticking up, and they're kind of mussed up. And he really looks like he needs a bath and needs to be combed. And and but he doesn't care. He's got that look on his face. He's just got that attitude. And the contrast with the black background—that's just super. Uh, you know, whoever whoever did this really had a great eye for this uh, contrast detail and. And the eye, you know, you can see that the eye is in focus. Very important when you're taking pictures of animals. This is a great shot. Who yeah. is the maker? Hello. I mean, the hair, the hair, this, I mean, it's just so detailed. Yeah. Very okay. cool. Who is the maker? Mr. Peter Forzak. That's fantastic. Place. Yeah. Way to go, Peter. Where I love all the details. It's really great. Now, what I want to ask is, Peter, you had this originally entered in creative, and then you crossed it out. Yeah, I <laughs> so made a mistake on purpose. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. 
So th this is actually a picture through the window of my car. He's just a few feet from me. And it's one of those animal parks where you drive around and you see all the animals. And he just came right up through the window and looked. And uh, again, it's it, it, it's a 12 megapixel image mm -hmm. that I shot with my Pentax camera. I've been kind of going back through my mm -hmm. older images, so you, but what? so you must have added that black background up here. Yeah, I did. Yeah, yeah. Okay. I did. yeah. I think it really makes it pop. No, yeah. it does. I see. Yeah, it's a great I, portrait. I've got some animal ones like you're saying how you drove through the parks just like that but i've never thought of trying to just add it on a black background like that that is awesome llamas have funny faces they're they're, they're, they're fun to talk taking photos of. <laughs> <laughs> everything's in focus you got good depth of feel i mean yeah. from the nose all the way back to the ears and down the fur going down the neck it's all in focus yeah, yeah. what a, a lucky capture it happens. It, it well, takes, yeah. Take your camera with you wherever you go. Then. Sometimes you get lucky. So, John, what is this score? Score to 25. Yeah. 25? That's yeah, fantastic. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. I've not seen something like that. <laughs> Very cool. You did a great job of cap capturing well the hair. Thank you. Uh -huh. <laughs> Okay, Donna, this one's yours. All right. Where's Mitten? This picture really cap captivated me. It, whoever the maker was took great care to put the monument in the middle, and then it's got a great frame around with the tree, and the clouds are just right above the monument, so they're not interfering with the view of the monument. The one thing that got me, the more I looked at this, I don't know whether I would like to see more contrast or whether it got to where there were too many competing textures. And I don't know if adding a little bit of contrast would help that. I do also think that that's being nitpicky because it's a really, really strong, compelling image. And other than that, I think that's a little on the nitpicky side, but well done. And who's the maker? Me. Nice yeah. job, John. It's beautiful. Yeah. It's good, John. Well, there was there was no way to add more contrast. This shot was so bright. Uh huh. I had to f I had to f stop at f twenty two, and I had to focus half the you know the focal plane to try to find the focal point so I could get both things in focus. Yeah. And then try and to adjust. I, I had that same was, thought, Donna. I thought it's all kind of it's all kind of gray. Where are the blacks? You know, but uh, I still think it's a great shot. That's the, isn't it that the area where all the cowboys ride through in all the movies? Yeah. Well, I don't know. This is, I have, this shot was there's three trees right next to each other in between the two mittens. Mm -hmm. And I was yeah. on a photo tour and the guy said, stand here. And I didn't like where he told me to stand, so I moved. <laughs> the one I wanted to enter, I didn't because Jack told me, that looks just like Peter's. I don't want anything that looks like Peter's. <laughs> well, I'm not going to put it. I'm not, I'm not sure why you would say that. <laughs> well, I put it on Facebook. It was this one. It's a different one. <laughs> yeah, this one looks like Peter also, John. So thanks. <laughs> I know. <laughs> yeah, I absolutely thing. love taking pictures like this. Getting, yes. You know, I love the framing uh, of it and the old wood. and the, it's, it's a great image, John. Well done. What, what would y'all think if you cropped off the top a little? I tried I, to do that. I can see a little bit. Just a little bit. It kind of looks yeah. I wanted, mm -hmm. I wanted to the mitten mm -hmm. to be centered, but not quite centered. So actually the bottom horizon is just above the third. The third line is actually the light colored line that runs across. I don't know if you can see my mouse or not. It runs across here. Um, yeah, I think if you took some, it goes up to the mid, and then the next, the next cloud third is just near the top edge of the first top branch. Okay. So, is there any way to crop it? Because I did it square. The clouds yeah. are very interesting. Square, square would would have worked too. Yeah, I know. But yeah, it might. Yeah, square might work. I've been trying to avoid squares and. 
<laughs> well, I, I think the clouds up there are fine, John. I think it's fine to leave those there. They they add interest and it's going to hang on my wall. Yeah. I, don't, I, don't, nice. I don't think they detract it. We came out, uh, scored a 22, rescored a 22, honorable <laughs> mention. Good yeah. show. Good job, John. I like hearing that a 22 gets an honorable mention. That just says there's a whole stack of nice stuff. <laughs> Getting harder. <laughs> there were some there were some really, really strong images. That's awesome. Yeah, there was, let me tell you, there was some heavy, heavy, heavy competition. And yeah. we had three rescores, then they were all within points of each other. That's great. So uh I mean this one right here was a 22, a 21, and a 23 on a rescore, but the 23 you know, got a higher place. So anyway. Anyway, okay. Charles? This one's yours. And this one is called Stately Columns. Yeah, I like this is neat. Um, hard part for me when I first saw it, I was like thinking more of a set people, but it's Pia color, but it still got the tonal range for whatever that shade is going all the way through. You had great details and we are able to focus in the top right. And I really liked how how the sun or however the light is when it hits these front pillars then it goes to the back and it's like but you can still tell there's separation between the pillar and the wall so that, that was really unique um not sure what the story is or kind of an impact factor not not sure what that is um I'm trying to think of there's one other thing did i make another note mm, yeah all right, but that's the only thing I would try to change is maybe a little bit further away to see a little bit more what it is, or maybe focus a little bit more on us on the column part of the upper to see the details. But other than that, it's a great photo. Who's the maker? Steve Manchester scored a 20. Now, where is this, Steve? Supreme Court. This is the Supreme Court building in San Antonio. No, no. Oh, I was like, we got yeah. this in San Antonio. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, this, this is a, a year and a half ago. My son and I went to DC and we just took a bunch of pictures. I just, I, I can, this is kind of an abstract sort of thing, just with the, you know, the emphasis on the lines and the shadows and, and that sort of thing. It's, I think if you're, what I would like to, I think it'd be really cool if you just, if you cut off a little bit to the right side. Uh -huh. Like I'm holding my hand against it and just kind of have these pillars mm -hmm. and doing it that way. It looks really neat to me because the right one's making me focus there. But if we're abstract wise, I don't know, that'd be a fun one to play with. Uh -huh. two, two middle ones with the dark one in the back with the door in the back. Ooh. Yeah, <laughs> that's pretty cool. Yeah, that's a door. Very nice. See, I, I like this. It takes me out of the box that I, you know, like outside the box for myself. Sorry. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. Yeah. Okay, so this this one's mine, I believe. Well, I this love one this, is, one. this one. This one is so. This one's called Sweet Dreams. Sweet Dreams. Yeah. Okay, I love this one. I just love love the detail, and you can use your imagination as to what's going on in there. But this gentleman's standing on what looks like a sidewalk, staring through the the glass. Um, I think I think that looks like there's food in there, like maybe it's a cafeteria. Anyway, so it looks like the gentleman on the right uh, reaching out maybe to hand the woman a credit card, buying some food. Um, the woman is focused on that. Uh, but there's some great depth there. You can see all the way back to the back wall. You can see the lights hanging down. Each one is bright. So that kind of, so your eye goes up there. And I'm not sure what those crooked things are. They look like maybe branches or vines or something. Um, probably some sort of, you know, decoration. Anyway, so so the man is staring into the, and watching other people in there. Um, and perhaps daydreaming about what people are doing, what they're thinking. And uh, I, I just thought it was uh, a very nice shot that just makes you think about what's going on. So there's a story there. And it's so sharp. I love the the um um the range the, the color the tonal range. Yeah and the tonal range is really well done. Who is the maker? This is 
Pardon? Trish Stone. Trish Stone. Scored Stone. at 22. Rescored at 23. Third place. Way to go. Wow. Those are sweets. It's a bakery. I was right. It was food. food. Yeah. Not a cafeteria, though. Can, can I ask one question for you, Trish? Sure. Yeah. Did you use a brush to try to highlight that the guy in the front with the Nike thingy? No. No? Okay. Mm -mm. What I did do was kind of take down the haze a little bit on the glass, but that's about it. There wasn't a whole lot, but there was a little bit, um, you know, just from reflection, but yeah. Uh, I like the actual reflection of whoever's face is in the middle there, but you really don't know if it's that person or another one. I that's actually so cool. probably my husband who was on the right side of this picture, but he's standing in kind of a weird way, so I chopped him out. <laughs> <laughs> That's probably rowdy. <laughs> <laughs> rowdy gets chopped out. So is this is this overseas somewhere too, Trish? Pardon? Is this in a is this is this in the U.S. or is this in one of your? No, this travels? is overseas. This is in Harlem, Belgium. I like it. It's a great image. I probably have twenty pictures of him looking in pastry windows, though. Honestly, okay. <laughs> <laughs> I I just. I just really loved how, I mean, you got from white to black, like every single shade of gray there is. It was so cool for me. Yeah, the spectrum is so cool. Yeah. Thank you. Even on the light bulbs. Yeah. <coughs> hey, let's see. This one. Good morning, Soma. This one goes to me, right? Yes, Donna. <laughs> My note from last night was very well, artsy this, cat. <laughs> this is Donna, I think. Right? It's okay. Charles has started. Oh, you want okay. to go ahead? Go ahead. Oh, you could... no, go ahead. All right. <laughs> this one made me smile as I like kitty cats. But uh, for me, this you know, obviously the subject's the cat. You got this great blurriness, great haze. It's coming through the trees, but the trees are out of focus. And it makes you wonder, what's the cat doing? Is there somebody out there? Um, I liked the fact that they went, uh, like I said, it's an artsy cat. This is, to me, an artistic style picture, which was really unique. The only thing I would try to do uh, is definitely tone down the highlights in the very top. It kind of takes your eye off the cat. And it and just doesn't lead you to the cat, I guess. Um, other than that, who's the maker? MD Manchester, score is, 21. Is that your cat, Steve? No, this is in Tennessee when Andy was living in Nashville. Oh, okay. You used to I live like close it. to this place, Sarah. And if you go further straight ahead, you go down the, go down the hill to the, um, to the river. It's a river that goes through Nashville, Cumberland. Cumberland River is down there. This is a stray cat just in the backyard. Those make the best cats. <laughs> it's it's funny like charles says this is kind of like the old masters the old photographer masters <laughs> would do their pictures tend to have lots of blacks lots of overblown uh, whites uh, lots of blurriness in there and yet they're classics and you know they've been around forever something that we don't really do anymore mm -hmm. so it's well, great it sounds like a sounds like a future assignment yeah, <laughs> emulate a, a, a an old master. There you go. Be cool, actually. <laughs> this one I thought was so captivating. I liked how it was dark and edgy that she was in the middle and it was symmetrical, but the light was coming from the left. I just thought it was exquisite in the detail and the moodiness. Um, who's the mate? I don't, I don't have any, the only thing, if I got really, really nitpicky, Although I'm not gonna I'm not gonna say it because it's part it's part of the scene and it's part of the story. So I'm gonna I'm gonna scratch that and just say it's a fabulous, well done image. Who's the maker? Robert Moreno. Second place score 23. Who did it? Leader. Peter. Oh yeah. Nice. Oh. 
Great. He went down. He went down there without me again. Um, Very sharp. <laughs> this one last year. Very sharp. The woman's uh, eyes were bright. There, she's got a great smile on her face. Uh, as Donna said, lit from the left. But for holding her dress out like that, just really kind of frames it. Yeah. Uh -huh. uh, and her, her costume there is so so uh, bright. It's probably very colorful. You know, just can imagine that. It might oh, be yeah. Reds and greens and yellows. And, and, uh, it has, right, it has great geometric shapes and triangles that really give you good eye movement. A little bit more light on her left side. It, it kind of out. The white side of her face overshadows the right side of her face because it's much brighter. Then the eye is much darker on the white side and the right, the other eye is much brighter. So it's not the light it's a good image, but I mean, it's just, the, to me, the light's stuck balanced on her face. Well, well I think, I think she, right much you can do about that, really. Painted. She the has right side of her face has been painted. Yeah, the, the left side, yeah, it's painted on the light side. She has yeah, white yeah, makeup right, on. Which is the right side. Yeah. Hey, hey what, do I know? what do I know? He got second place. <laughs> <laughs> it's a great image. Mm -hmm. it's yeah. I agree. It's a great name. Yeah, it was really, really a classic that's style. That's the goal. Nature. Nature. My not favorite subject. So. Okay. Yellowstone Eagle. Is this Charles' turn? Hmm? Uh, uh, I can go again. I'll go. So Donna just went, so maybe she go next. And I'll go after that. Well, this one I, I rated high because it's difficult to capture birds in flight and get everything in focus, especially the eye with the wingtips. Um, I don't know where they were, but I oh, it's a great capture. I, I don't think there's anything you could do different in this one because you can see the detail on the underbelly. You can see the eye. Um, and I would have loved to have the full frame image of this and be able to zoom in and really look at it. Um, the fact that the background's blurry, but from where the tree it left from, it tells a great story. It, it saw something and it was going for it. Who's the maker? Uh, Jack Smith. Yeah, I thought so. Good That's job, Florida, 20, Florida 21. 21? Yeah. That's an excellent nature picture. I'm going to assume you were in Alaska. Great detail. Was that one? Was that one one thousandth, one two thousandth? What was second, Jack? Uh, I don't. I'd have to go back and look, but uh, yeah, I know I was conscientious about making sure um, I could maybe do a pretty good job, which normally I don't. And it was in Yellowstone along the Madison River. I know That's Peter right. remembers that area. That's where they are. Nice. Great. Wow. Very nice. No, excellent job on that. Yeah, I mean, you can see that you can see the feathers mm -hmm. at the ends of the wings are very sharp. The eye is sharp. You see the color of the beak and the talons or the feet there. Yeah. And so sometimes when you try to take pictures of bald eagles, the white of their head just, sort of just gets blown out. It it's very difficult to avoid that, but that looked pretty good in that shot there. Yeah. Okay, well, we got some water lilies here. I'm familiar with water lilies, and there's a uh, there's a uh, dragonfly there on that one there. So there's there's some nice color here, the yellow and the pink contrasted with the green and the water in the upper right corner. It's a little bright, but that's not bad. I don't think that detracts from it at all. So really nice nature picture, um, mostly because I, I love the colors. I'm trying to see how well in focus some of these are it looks it looks like they're in pretty good focus maybe just a little out of focus there but but um i think the the, the gestalt here is a really nice colorful nature picture who who is the maker Don Kane. and the whole thing is actually in focus it's the, the yeah. out of focus parts in the back that make the front part okay. look weird but yeah. Is this on a river or a lake or a pond or something? This was in um, 
I think Louisiana, I have to believe. Mm -hmm. Like in a bayou, or is this uh, like a, a garden or something? Just a garden. It was on the. It's in a botanical garden, I believe, in Shreveport, Louisiana. Oh, okay. <laughs> Foggy geese. I thought this was a great mood picture with the geese are placed so well in the mist. They're a little bit centered, maybe if there had been a little bit less of the top or a little bit less of the bottom to get them off that dead center. However, having said that, it, it, it is, you know, the rule of third is meant to be broken. I think the one thing, and this could be my eyes, um, is that the pole on the left center third, on the, the pole on the left third vertical looks um, crooked to me. Like it needs to just be straightened just a little bit. But again, I've got astigmatism. So that could be my eyes. Overall, well, maybe that, that pole is not straight up and down either. That's maybe. true too. I, I think, though, given that I can't tell where the true horizon is, I might have been tempted to make it straight, whether it was straight or not. But you're right, it may not have been straight in reality. But it's a it's a nice, moody capture. And who's the maker? Andy Manchester. Sure. Go to 23, had to rescore, came in the 20, and got honorable mention. Okay. Once again, he beat his dad. No, he didn't beat his dad. Sorry, I thought he did, but he beat me on the last. He beat me on the last two, actually. There, Grand Canyon Lower Falls. Yeah, this is a. I like this photos. I've been there, taken photos. Definitely didn't have that rainbow color effect that they they were able to capture this time. So I, I think it was great. Depth of fields, excellent. I'd be curious if there's 50 other people around them because I was wondering if you can maybe just widen it up a little bit more to the left a little bit. But other than that, it, it's excellent overall, especially the rainbow. I, I give you props for the rainbow colors. <laughs> Who's the maker? Trish Stone, score to 21. Nice, Trish. Thank you. Uh, was was there a whole bunch of people? Uh, yeah, I mean, yeah, there's always people everywhere at Yellowstone. Um, Yes. <laughs> is, is this taken at Artist Point? And there's a, a point where, you know, everybody kind of knows approximately this time of day is where you can see the rainbow. So, yeah, it can get very cool. Yeah. I, I liked how you, I'm assuming you used the Zoom for this. And that, that worked out really yes. well. Yes. Well, and it's interesting. It's this this always has, always has a green Pardon? streak in it. I wonder why this, why, why. Yellowstone Falls always has that green streak in it. There's this a green streak? In the water. Yeah, the, the in green the water. In the water, yeah. Oh, you mean at the top of the waterfall? Yeah. Yeah, yeah it's just the way it is. Yeah, it's always there. I never noticed that. You have to go check my white room photos and see. <laughs> <laughs> Whoa. Uh, lenticular clouds. Yeah. Yeah. This is this is impressive. I, I love this one. I'm glad I had a chance to say something about this one. This just really is a, a, a wow wow factor here. It's just the mountain just looks massive. I don't know what mountain it is, but it looks massive. And you got the play of the shadows uh, with the ridges coming down the mountain, the dark of the dark of the rock and the white of the of the snow and the blue of the sky and these really cool lenticular clouds that form as the air passes over the tops of mountains. Um, it's, uh, I like the way it's cropped, a little bit of sky there. I don't think we need, I mean, maybe more sky you could argue, but I think the meta sky there is just fine. And down there at the bottom, it's dark. Just, it's just the way it is. It's not, it doesn't detract. And this must've been taken, I don't know, maybe afternoon 
um, but the exposure seems to be just just about right. Um, and that's important considering how bright the sun probably was. So this, uh, I think this is really well done, very eye-catching, just a wonderful nature photograph. Who's the maker? Trick Murray scored a 25 first place. Very nice. Nice. I, I was really impressed by how they don't have the haze that you normally get when you're taking distant photos of the mountains like that. Yeah, the air must have been really clear. Yeah. I wonder where this is at. Isn't he in Ecuador? Miss Patrick Murray? I don't know. Yeah. That's probably he's somewhere in South Peru. America. Is he in Ecuador? Yeah. Uh, he's somewhere bounced down there. Man, South he America is, it's, not, it's South American. That's all I know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He moved down there, and I mean, he's got to have a ton of subject matter. I would love to shoot down there. Yeah. I'm jelly. <laughs> right, me too. <laughs> I stripped fire. Hey, Donna. I thought this photograph this image was so well done with the orange and the mirror image and the reflections that ripple it just mesmerizes and then what you have are the rim lighting from the sun I don't know whether the sun's going up or down uh, but just and you even have the reflection of the rim lighting that just gives this starburst effect oh wait I've got a dog eating my toes, sorry. Um, but I just thought this was spectacularly well done. It's crisp, it's clear, it's got a great silhouette to it. Um, who's the maker? Peter Florzak, scored a 23. Yeah, fantastic. Rescored is a 23, and then we had to go in and out and got in. So it got second place. Nice, very nice. Yeah, cool. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I like this one a lot, Peter, especially how you did the, the little starburst in the center of it. Well, you know, it's Bastrop State Park, and it, it, it used to be one of my favorite parks until it burnt down. Yeah. And, uh, you know, it was interesting going around trying to capture something to show, you know, that it was just a bunch of sticks and burnt out trees and stuff. So it, was this was this with your Pentax? Again, yeah, with my Pentax. This is uh, probably, you know, I, I don't know when the fire was, but, you know, eight years ago or mm -hmm, something least, like that. Yeah. Been a long, yeah, quite a while. It's fun trying to find the big woodpecker, the, the, the pileated woodpeckers out there. Right. <laughs> yep. Cool. Anything pet? Cool. Yeah. Let's see. This one's going to be on Yeah, Charles. Let's see what my notes like. So on this image, is like a I'm an amazing butterfly one. You have the details going from left to right. You can see the little antennas. The it's not fur. It's whatever that stuff is on it. I like how there's a little bit of the flowers down below to give it a little bit of color. You got a great blurred out background. Um, I like this more of a square image of this one. The only thing that I kind of felt was a little bit distracting in the very bottom right is the extra flower that's blurred out when everything else is kind of green it kind of draws your eye away a little bit um, but that's the only thing i can see say i would change but it's a great capture for a butterfly uh, who's the maker steve manchester scored a 23 rescored a 23 and then went <laughs> in and out with the last one and was found out got yeah. third place oh, i'm sorry steve it's okay. It's the way it goes. <laughs> it's, it's a great, it's a great, it's a great capture. It's great. Yeah. So this is a couple of monarchs in the backyard. Just I, you know, we plant the flowers that attract them, and they come. And just the the lighting seemed to be just right on this one. Mm -hmm. You know, to get that, uh, you can see kind of the ripples, or you can see the contours in the wings, because the lighting is just just right to show that. It's, yeah. it's kind of cool to see that because butterflies just kind of look like their wings are flat. They're, they're really not. They've got contours and ripples and things in them. So 
that's mm -hmm. what's always very difficult to capture when you do butterflies or something similar is is, is like you're talking the, re the ripples and that's details yeah yeah i'll have to get some tips from you on how to photograph uh butterflies i'm going to go to the uh butterfly uh, the monarch butterfly thing down in uh, mexico outside of mexico oh. city oh in february so um that sounds like fun mm -hmm. yeah you know, just millions okay. butter of butter. I think Peter just invited. <laughs> yeah, come on down. Let's all go down together. Yeah. That's nice. Yay, travel. Hello. Who starts this round? Donna, I think we're back to you. Okay. I think this image is just wow i like how there's three monuments you've got the meandering road in the foreground or the mid foreground you've got the clouds that add interest you've got the sun some might argue that the the sun's a little bright and it's a little golden and a little maybe distracting but in a way i think it just kind of adds to the drama of the of the sense of place and the expansiveness and you've got the one ray going out so i can see where that would bother some but for me i just found it to be part of the story well done and who's the maker that's me well done john thanks this is uh this is actually taken from my room at my <laughs> Oh, I and hate with, that for you. Uh, and with and it's also taken with my phone. Wow. Oh, that's why the sun's like that. Amazing how far cell phones have come. Yeah. And that's that's what the, the, the new iPhone, well, this is the iPhone 13, it's not the new one, but the 13, for some reason, puts streaks in. Mm. Huh. And what you don't know, as I cloned one, there was one streak right here, but on the left hand side was another streak from a reflection in the cloud. I didn't like it, so I cloned it out, but I left the other one there. I wonder why we, we even use real cameras anymore, huh? Mm -hmm. <laughs> well, this is like early in the morning, man. I was just have just poured myself a cup of coffee, walked out on the deck, and there it was. So I took a picture with my phone. It's beautiful. <laughs> awesome. Is yeah. is that a little vehicle down there on yeah. the right side? Yep. Yeah. Ah. Yeah, I see it. The little white. Uh... That's right. It's, there's a white white truck. Yep. Yeah. That's right below, right below Barrick View. There's a white truck right down there. The only thing we're missing is John Wayne. <laughs> that's another go. picture. That's that's <laughs> next month's picture. Uh, <laughs> well done. Yeah. Oh. Lights of heaven. D this picture was extremely intriguing for me. Um, I would love to actually go and take more pictures of this, the colorful glass, how the sun's coming through and lighting up the wall. It, it's just amazing. Uh, there's different things in the background, little characters. So it's kind of telling a story. I, I would like to actually know what the story is. The details on the brick, it looked great. Um, the columns are pretty much straight for this type of image. I don't know what else there could be changed on it, um, but I definitely, the wow factor for the color and the glass and on the wall was very impressive. Now, who's the maker? Stone scored 23, tied with another 23, and then went in and out and got in. For, uh, this is first place. Nice, Trish. Ooh. Nice, Who's the gentleman there? Nice Especially like the way the flame on the candles look. Mm. Oh yeah, something about I don't know. Was this a very wide angle lens, Trish? You're on mute, Trish. Trish. <laughs> oh, she's she disappeared. Yeah, she must okay. have stepped out. Okay, <laughs> taking care of business here. I'm trying to figure out who that gentleman is down there in the lower right. No, that's what I was just staring at. Yeah, that's that's what I don't I, remember him there. Wonder mm. if it's a statue. It's a statue. Okay. 
Uh, uh, no, I doubt it because that strap. It's not a statue. Uh, it's a real person? Yeah. It's a real Got person. A yeah. and... Oh. Oh, no. I thought it was a little statue. Yeah, it's got a, like a badge <laughs> on it. Like some last night when we were scoring things. Goodness. This is, that's the ghost. Okay, so this is. <laughs> When I first yeah. saw him, I thought maybe he was. I've been watching this show called Father Brown, and oh, that's yeah. who I thought it was. With the bowler. Father Brown. Uh, you bowler you bowler asked. Damage. I think I had my my audio off. I think oh, you asked are. how I shot this. Did you hear that? Uh, no, I asked. I was asking the the if it was a wide angle lens. Oh, basically, um, I shot this thing, and I shot it with both my camera and my iPhone. I don't remember if this is an iPhone shot or my camera. I'd have to go look, but this was shot in a church in Ghent and, you know, there you go. <laughs> that was, yeah, the colors are cool. We're talking, about, we're talking about the little guy down in the corner, though. Oh, yeah, I think he's a carving. Mm -hmm. I think he's carved out of wood. Oh, what? It really I think is it's a wood carving. Huh, what do you know? Oh. Yeah. Okay. It's rowdy think. looking at pastry. What can I say? <laughs> <laughs> I believe that, yeah. <laughs> pastry from <laughs> heaven <laughs> the vertical lines at the sides are pretty straight so i was thinking you know it's probably not a cell phone because cell phones are such wide angle lenses that you start to get quite a bit of curvature i think yeah. don't you? i probably straightened the, the image a little bit anyway yeah very cool Thank where you. was like that at trish great, great color that's in ghent it's a that church in ghent oh, and there's okay. some, there's a famous piece of art there that I, I can't remember what it is that we never did go and see because the line was just way out the door. But anyway, a beautiful place. Mm, looks like it. Mm. Answers. Yeah, this one's good <laughs> dynamic. Um, lots of color. Obviously, people are dancing. People in the background are dancing. They're wearing costumes. Looks like all the men have the same with the red white shirt with the red kerchief around their necks and the the woman is smiling. She's got the paint on her face, the flowers in her hair, the white lace and the, and the blue on her. Um, yeah, this is a very, a very dynamic shot. I wish, I kind of wish there was something right in the middle. And I kind of wish that guy was looking toward us too, but that, that probably doesn't happen in this kind of dance. The woman faces this way, the man faces that way. So what I like about it, the color, the sharpness, uh, the dynamic, you know, you can see there's motion here, there's a lot going on. Um, it just looks like a happy time, like some sort of a festival or something in there, and they're, and they're dancing. Who Who's the maker? Patrick Murray scored a 20. Hmm. My only suggestion is what I was thinking was, I would have stepped more to the left and looked back at an angle at the two to bring the two people closer together. Hmm. If you stood on the side instead of straight on you stood more to the left you would have you, they would have moved closer together you know see what i'm saying yeah you would get that angle shot to them and with it, which would fill that center space yeah of course it may have blocked some of her face at that point he's got his arms raised but it's a good thought you never yeah. know till you go over there and try yeah well that's it's yeah because that's one of the things i've been trying to learn how to do is not stand in one place is move and look at what you're shooting yeah Look at different angles. There you go. It's very nice. Hey, it's very good. Real quick, does anybody know how to get in touch with Patrick? Like an email? Peter, you have what? an email for him? I, I probably do. Do we need to get in touch with him? Yeah, yeah. We got his uh, email address. No, I'd like to. I'm just wanting to give him a you know my kudos on his photography because it's I, I can see his the improvement in his photography. So, that's all. True. I'll send it to you. Cool. Thank you. I don't know if it's improvement in his photography. He's got better subject matter there than he does here. Sure. No, yeah. it's an improvement <laughs> in his photography. He's gotten much better. Oh, yeah. Yeah. It's a lot of improvement. Mm -hmm. A lot of improvement in everybody's photography, really. Yeah. yeah. Absolutely. Downtown Nashville. Um, I think it's supposed to be my turn. Is it okay if I come in on Andy's? Uh... Sure, sure. Photo? Yeah? Yes, yeah. All right. Well, this one, there's so much, there's so much color to it. This, this is sunrise, I believe he told me, 
a sunrise. And there's the Cumberland River on the right there again. But you have um, all these uh, brick buildings down at the low part there, uh, close to the river. They're all right next to each other. That brick facade there's kind of that historical sort of look that you see in a lot of old cities uh, around around the country. And then behind that, the bigger uh, the bigger buildings. And then the uh, the one they call the Batman building, right, on right. The far there, the AT and T building. And then the sky is sky has got a great color as it as it uh, blends from blue down to the yellow, and and it's very sharp. And you get that you get that the taper from the tall building on the left down to the right there. And uh, I th I think this is really well done. It's all in focus. The colors are sharp. Uh, and I know who the maker is. It's Andy Manchester. What? How did he score, John? He scored a twenty-one and got honorable mention. Did he shot this? Andy, no, it's his son, Andy. Nice. Wow, nice. nice. Yeah. And I have a, I have a lot of pictures of that guitar that's right down there on the ground. Yeah, one way down I've here. That, I've been right there, so. Yeah. Oh yeah, I see the guitar. Yeah. Yeah. That's right. That's very cool. I, I love that city. Me too. Yeah, Nashville's nice. White Sands National Park. Yeah. This one is a very striking image with the spirals of the yucca plant and the and the bloom extending out. You've got some shadows. For me. I think this would be a better composed image if it was vertical since the plant is so tall and then you wouldn't see the people on the left that kind of draw my eye away. Who's the maker? This is Jack Smith. Score to 19. I agree. I love white sands. Well, I like the There's yucca. Nothing there, <laughs> except white sand. The yucca plant is very sharp. Each one of those spikes, you can see them individually. They come to that point, yeah. and then you got the dead, the dead yucca flowers up at the top, probably with the seeds coming out. But then, but the whole thing is like the, um, the sky with the blue and the, you know, and the clouds and the um, ripples and the ripples in the sand, mm -hmm. and the two people out there. I'm not sure if they're distracting or if they, you know, just kind of tell you how far away, you know, give you the idea of perspective. Yeah, I, I like I like the people. Has anybody seen the footprints that kind of lead to the people? Yeah, they're the very foreground. faint. Very faint. Yeah, that's what I, I dig about it. it. Just leads you to them, so it's uh, yeah. Yeah, and the people aren't blurry either. They're sharp. This must have been. A, F-16 or F-22 or something. That's pretty sharp. I think that, again, this is one of those ones where I would have moved the people closer by rotating around. Mm -hmm. But Oh, yeah. And, and to do a, that lead from the plant leads to the people type of deal. So get a perspective of the sand and the scale. But that's great. I just, I just like the plant. It is great. Very sharp. Mm -hmm. Nice, nice. Anybody, any thoughts for a black and white version of this? Hmm, perhaps. Pretty striking. Maybe. Give, don't give him ideas. Don't give him ideas. <laughs> <laughs> Let that white sand just might be overpowering. <laughs> yeah. It's nice shot. Nice. For black and white, white sands. Uh huh. <laughs> uh, Viva Fiesta. Viva. So, you know, for travel, this, this says travel all over to my book. Um, I enjoyed what the story is. I think it's really cool to see this character up front that is very prominent, very tall, <coughs> the entire image. And then when you look behind him, you see probably a normal height person and slowly going back up. And I, I, I like the story it's telling. I like the capture of that moment. Uh, one thing it does feel like it's, I feel like everything's tilting a little bit. I'm not sure if that's just me or how the image is or 
just how everything was going. Um, but a good job overall. Who's the maker? Uh, Peter Forzak scored a 19. Hey, Peter, is that is that like, are they leaning, walking or something? Or is I it think they're just leaning? walking. You just know, walk just how it was at the moment. Yeah, I think they're, you know, uncomfortable in their garb and they're just kind of leaning, you know. A couple of drinks walking. into the parade. Mm -hmm. I have to go see this parade because that's so, I've never seen anything like that. It's like the, uh, like the wood costume or something. King <laughs> Williams is the best parade that they put on. It's really worth coming to see. Like a paper mache. Mm -hmm. Paper mache, um, there you go. What I would, what I think is kind of funny is how tall this guy is, and he has little tiny feet. <laughs> <laughs> it might be on stilts. No, no, he's no, you can see he's, he's, he's sitting on his shoulders. I think probably they may yeah. they have a frame that sits on their shoulders. Yeah, it's yeah. very interesting. That's cool. I haven't been down to King William Parade yet. I'll have to go down there. Yeah. I've done it every year for 24 years. Wow. Well, you need to take some people with you. <laughs> well, you want to come work in my booth? Because I usually, I'm, I mean, I'm sitting in my booth taking this picture. Oh. <laughs> I can come down and look at your booth while they walk by. Yeah, I can do that. <laughs> April 29th, 2023, the next one. Okay. <laughs> Add that to the calendar. Frame the photo. I love this. Um, is this is Okay. Uh, and we're in travel, right? Okay. Well, <clears throat> this is an interesting um, framed picture. I see a, a, a picture of a picture of Jesus there and probably in a church. Um, I guess that probably. Main thing is that is that frame. It's almost like a fleur de lis. I'm not sure how to describe that. The gold, the gold frame there, and it certainly brings your brings your focus right to that picture of Jesus as the good shepherd. You know, there, um, the gold, the gold repeats itself um, inside the building there, and um, there's some nice de there's some nice detail. It looks like some uh, some lace uh, up on the cross going across there so uh, obvious uh, religious overtones here um who is the maker maker is mr robert moreno he came in third place scored 22 is this one and of the started a new trend he started the, the photographing the whole craze we were photograph <laughs> we see we photographing through the little backs of chairs we started photographing through the kneelers we started photographing through the frames i don't know we did a lot oh, we did a lot of these this one that's actually the altar so what you see that white lace is the is the white oh. a white lace cover of the altar oh oh i see oh that's what it is oh i thought mm -hmm. that was just the wall and that was all fancy and me too mm -hmm. yeah there's a painting on the wall um, the actual altar altar and i just like the fact that he's i, I kind of wish it was centered more so you could saw the full edge of the other picture the edge but it lines up with the one at the top so you yeah. got the stained glass window at the top you've got jesus did the lamb <laughs> on the bottom that was kind of cool how he framed that mm -hmm. very nice what's the dark thing towards the the top on the top right is that somebody or an object it's a statue it's a statue statue, it's a statue. Okay. yeah of an angel Angels, yeah. yeah. Oh, it is an angel. Okay, like, it's a little dark. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I like angels it. in this I church. Did. I think this 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 church has more angels in it than any. I, I think this is the one that has the two, the two holy water fount, founts in the front, where they're both angels, mm -hmm. which is kind of cool. Yeah. All right. Definitely. Now for the weird scoring channel. This is this is this is the weirdest scoring one I think I've ever seen. <laughs> tie, 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 not tie. <laughs> okay. 
falling to pieces. Okay, Donna, I think it's your turn again. Okay, so I really liked this image. I thought it was creative. I thought it was outside the box. I just thought it was fun. Um, I don't know that I would change anything. I just thought it was really, really cool. And it fits the category. Um, good use of thirds. Um, yeah, I just thought it was fun. Who's the maker? Chris Stone. It's Third cool, place. Chris. Hmm. Sorted 22 and then went in and out and went in and out and ended up out. This is and got so third place. Cool. Got third place. Yeah. It I looks like it, it, so it, much it, fun. It reminds me of that last Harry Potter movie where Voldemort just disintegrating, kind of coming apart in tiny Here little pieces. All right, Steve, Voldemort, huh? <laughs> he who has no name, huh? Or what? <laughs> we, won't, we will not speak his name or something like that. It's I agree, this is cool. Yeah. Now, where'd Trish go? She's, she, I'm here. Did she leave us again? I'm here. Sorry. <laughs> oh. I'm finding you a cold and I, I, I went to go get a thermometer and yeah. So. Oh, go lay down. I was just wondering how you did that. Um, there is, is a, a way or? to do basically dispersion or shatter. And oh, it okay. takes a yeah. little bit of work. It takes a little bit of work to do it. But um, yeah, I just watched a video about 18,000 times and <laughs> went through it. Because that's how it is for me, you know. I mean, this stuff takes me, you know, days to do, but that's what that is. I thought it was Very so cool. cool. It Thank was you. so creative, and nothing I've never seen anything like that, which makes it fun. And that's just a shot of my friend Abby, who I took. Robert came over with his lights and helped me take a couple of shots that I could use to manipulate like this. So anyway, that's well lit. Mm -hmm. Yes, it is. Yeah, very well done, Trish. Very nice. Thank yeah, you. Very interesting. Very original. Very cool. And yeah. this one is called Tuna Cactus. <laughs> I just called it a cactus. Uh, I liked this. This I've tried similar things in Photoshop and whatnot, kind of doing a watercolor style with the different brushes. I, I liked how they added the the border around the image with the different brush brush strokes. It looked really cool. The colors just definitely make it that altered reality and psychedelic like. Um, overall, I, there's nothing I could change about this image. I, I think they did a great job for creative. Who's the maker? Peter Forzat. Yeah. Second place, scored 22, tied with Trish's and went in and out and got in. So it got second place. I liked how you did that. Now, what is a tuna cactus? <laughs> oh, it's the tuna that grows on the cactus. It's the part that you eat. You can uh, cut it up and, you know, it's just the okay, little kind called of cactus? tuna. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. Yeah. What kind of cactus? Is it a prickly pear? And it's a prickly pear <laughs> cactus, right. Yeah, okay. True. But it has tunas growing off of it. So this, uh, I've this is. I've heard of them called tunas before. This one I probably did, again, probably 20 years ago, I did this image. I was trying, I, I used to do this little style with the watercolory thing and the outline and the, you know, but it, I'm running out of creative things to do. And I just thought, oh, well, just put it in, just give it a shot. I liked it back then. So I liked how the spines kind of go with your brush strokes on the outsides. But and they're still there. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Definitely creative. Yep. Very sharp. Mm -hmm. This one's called chai flower. Oops. Well, this is creative in that the flowers are pink and everything else has um, black and white. And they look like, I wonder, if, I can't tell what kind of flowers they are, but I like the way the the stems are on the left and it kind of, you got the flowers and then it kind of fades into 
um, just mostly black on the right there, kind of gives it a, a um, I don't know if it's a balance or just a different on the left and on the right. I, I'm not sure what else to say, but the flowers themselves are pretty sharp. Um, and uh, who is the maker? This is Andy, Andy Manchester. Uh, and was, what, what was the score? Score was ba -ba -da 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 -da. 18. And then it rescored at 20. Okay. It tied with five others, so just, just bear yeah. with me. <laughs> wow. Uh, tub head shot. Did we, did we skip Charles or is it my turn again? I, no, Char Charles did the little it's cat. Your turn. Yeah, I did the, it's your turn. Yeah, I was like, I did the. <laughs> this is a really cute picture of a bear, the way it's composed, a good use of the thirds <laughs> with the nose being down and, and the eyes and the ears. I got a little distracted by the finish. I kept my my mind kept thinking it was too pixelated, but then I think it's just the creative technique that was used on it. Um, but it, it's a it's a great image with a cute little bear. Who's the maker? Jack Smith scored an eighteen, rescored a nineteen. Cute bear, Jack. Mm -hmm. Very cute. Lots of good detail, fur on the ears and fur. And the eyes are sharp with a little uh, light catch there. Almost looks like he's crying. <laughs> but, looks like he ate some mustard. <laughs> That's what I thought. <laughs> well, it's, it's cute the way he has his head cocked a little bit, just a little bit, you know, like he's, like he's curious. It's striking a pose, man. <laughs> Charles, yeah, he could, have brushed his, could have brushed his hair first, though. <laughs> Charles, think, he's, eat, he's eating a dandelion. That's one of their favorite foods, a little cup. That's a day, oh, oh, that's cool. Okay. I was thinking Yogi Bear and Boo Boo and stealing a picnic basket. Yeah. <laughs> that's good. Let's see the next. Cool. Okay, I'll okay. see. Pink blue. <laughs> I liked again the colors, the kind of doing the pinkish purplish ones, um, turning the lilies, or not the lily, but the lily pads a different color. That was really neat. Overall, it's creative. I like the composition of it. I like what they did. The only thing that kind of gets me is I have a lilies that looked similar colors, so I didn't feel the lily was crazily altered, but it definitely is altered, um, especially on the tips with how it's probably like a white going out. That's really unique looking. Uh, who's, that's the only thing that I kind of found an issue with. Other than that, it's a great, great creative image. Who, who uh, did this one? Eve Manchester scored an 18, rescored a 23, came in honorable mention. Yeah. Very striking. But what color is this in real life, Steve? White. Just it's white. white. Just I liked how you didn't didn't brought the colors out from the center like that. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. So the the petals are white. The internal things are are yellow, and the lily pads are green. You know. So this. Yeah. You know, just just put the color in, where I put it in there, and it uh, did the composition the way I wanted to do it, and there it is. All right. I'll have to send you photos of, uh, I got some really, some exotic lilies that when they bloom, they're, they're these crazy colors like this. They like, I don't know how they mix them, but they do something and it turns out really neat. Yeah. Yeah. So there, we, we have two kinds of lilies in, in our little pond in the backyard. This is one and the, the one I put in last month was, a, was the other kind. And I, I can, I can show those to anybody if they want to see them. If you need more lilies, let me know. I've got tons. <laughs> I think so does I think so does he. I guess you know every every month we have 
a lily in the creative section in it. Yeah, I'm kind of he in a rut. He has tons of them. Yeah, I'm kind of in a rut on that. I think, I think, but, you, think you go out and take more pictures of lilies than I do. <laughs> but each, each one is distinctly different. And if you go back and look at all of them, they're, they're very different from each other. Oh, yeah, they are. Mm -hmm. I've always wanted. Yeah, I always need uh, lilies, Charles. If uh, you know, the critters are always messing with my lilies in the pond. Yeah, the, the deer got into my pond and ate my lilies on the first pond, so I had to rebuild. Mm -hmm. had, we had to put up a huge fence now and all kinds of stuff. <laughs> the worst was when I stocked it with koi, and then oh, the raccoons cool. came and thought they had. I gave them a sushi bar. Uh, I've, had a raccoon my my <laughs> I've had a raccoon come and trash my pond the last two summers. They come and they just turn the lilies over and they nip off the buds and then anyway, oh, wow. they just trash it. Wow. We caught one last summer. This summer we didn't catch the little bugger. I don't know what <laughs> happened. To him. Maybe he got hit yeah. by a car. So, you know what they're eating now? They're eating the filter on my pump. No, they take really? the pump apart and then they take the 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 there's a, a plastic filter in there that filters all the dirt out and they rip the whole thing apart and then they chew up. I don't know why they're chewing on it, but they make a mess of the whole thing. Wow. First thing I do is get rid of that pond. <laughs> well, I have two. I have two of them. So. <laughs> oh. Infrared waterfall. I think this one's mine. Yeah, yes. well, we talked about this one for a while last night. It's a really nice picture of a waterfall uh, with the water coming from the left and from the right coming down to a spot there on the lower left. I, I like the composition uh, of that with the way the water is and the blue rocks and the, the beige uh, occupying the corner on the right. I think it's just a really nice uh, compositional thing. Now that's just regular photography. So the thing that makes this that makes this um, creative is the fact that it is uh, infrared and the rocks are not really blue. And, and so the rocks uh, that are turning blue really does give it a creative look. I don't know, surreal sort of look. You know, like maybe it's a different planet or something. <laughs> anyway, I, I like the overall effect of this. I, I think it's really nice. Who's the maker? Yeah. Uh, this is Patrick Murray. Uh, scored in 18, rescored in 18. Uh, I think I'm trying to, I'm going to have to ask him an email and find out because I bought his infrared camera, which is a has a 940 filter on it. And it turns everything red. So I don't know what color turns everything blue. Or unless he tinted it blue and then overlaid it over the top of a radar photograph. So <clears throat> nice. Reminds me of that movie Avatar, the blue. Yeah. <laughs> I mean it's really the, the blue is really what makes it stand out. That's kind of oh, yeah. cool. Nice. I like the blue better than the red. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Oh. Okay. Last one. Hand painted floral. I think this is so elegant and so Victorian and such a sense of time, the way the, the flowers curve and you've got such nice rhythm. And for, if you go from the top orange flower and you go to the left and then you've got the curve to the right, it creates that nice S curve in there. But then it's got such great eye movement that I just think this is exquisite in its simplicity. Very well done in the final product. Who's the maker? Me. It's great. Beautiful. I just think oh, this is beautiful. This is too. And it's it's, too it's kind of this is this is a weird. This is done in uh, multiple layers, and it's also hand painted. So the, the flower vase and the tulips and the flowers at the bottom, I think Trish and Robert and I went out to the tulip fields, the tulip forest. We did, yeah, a couple of years ago. Down south of town. And the <coughs> background is the tulip field that we took pictures of. I wondered about that. 
Oh. And I painted it, it like and then I took the yeah. vase, the two vases, and I put them on the table that was sitting up front by the cashier. And I merged that in, and then nice. I painted it. And wow. it's painted with a... Uh, Looks like a watercolor brush. In a tablet. Oh, yeah, you use the thing, that's right. And different kinds of brushes. So, That's absolutely beautiful. Oh, and by the way, this is going to be a Christmas present. Anybody wants it? <laughs> <laughs> You're what, putting that in the, uh, in the draw? Yeah. John? Mm -hmm. I it's can't sell it, so I might as well give it away. Good for you. That's 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 a I nice. Bought a new one, uh, so it nice doesn't thing. matter. <laughs> By the way, you did a great job on the on, on this image. It, it, it is. It, is that first place? Yes. No. By the way, yeah, it is first place. The, okay. ah, the, the nice. well deserved first place. Yeah. Yeah. When I went, I went to one of Jim's meetings several years ago, probably four or five years ago, and I watched a guy show how he took photographs and then hand painted them using uh, Corel paint. And I have Corel paint and I was using it. Not an easy program to use, but once I learned how to do it. And then he painted pictures and he was selling them for thousands and thousands of dollars. People would bring them pictures of a dog and he would paint their dog. Cool. Now they're actually doing, uh, this girl up in Bernie who does weddings has a girl that goes with her when she goes out to shoot the weddings and, and the rehearsals and all this other kind of stuff, she goes with them and then she paints the wedding. Oh yeah, right yeah I've seen that. And she paints like she one is, scene, yeah. And she is quick because she'll paint, she'll go out and they'll take a picture of the ceremony with them standing at the altar and paint that. And when they're done, she hands them the painting. It is so cool. And I have no idea much how much she charges for it, but it's got to be expensive. <laughs> wow. And I'm not that good. I'm not that good. So <laughs> this is a combination of all kinds of different things from Lightroom to Photoshop to Corel Paint. So. Really nice. Mm -hmm. Turned out great, John. It was excellent. Definitely. Yay. And that's all, folks. Nice job. That's all, folks. <laughs> Good picks, people. I loved it. Love it. Mm -hmm. Okay, so next Thursday, what time is the uh, party next Thursday? It's Not Thursday the after that. It's on the 15th. 15th, yeah, right. 15th. 15th. Oh, okay. At 6.30. 6. And where, where, what's the restaurant place? It might think cut out when y'all said that earlier. Uh, Carrava's on uh, mm -hmm. I-10 yeah. and Days of Autumn. Days of Autumn. Days of Autumn. Carrava's. Mm -hmm. cool. I and I'll send out an email saying yeah, I, the yeah. address, and the phone the number, and, and everything. So. The menu and all that kind of stuff. Yeah, Got yeah. it on my calendar. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, I am excited. <laughs> well, there were some great images there. That was uh, that mm -hmm. was very very nice. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It, was, it, was, it was a it was a fun night. I'm glad I wasn't a judge. That's for dang sure. Yeah, yeah me too. Mm -hmm. Some great stuff. That's what we need Donna for. Yeah. I don't know about yeah. that. It was well, there, there were some really good images. Yeah. You have a unique. I mean, actually, actually, Donna. believe it or not, I mean the score the scores were really close. Mm -hmm. And yeah. you start looking at, I mean, they were all high scores. They were all in the 20s, except for creative, which most of them were 18s. Uh, but I mean, the scores between the judges, I don't know who the judges were on the score sheet, it just says judge one, judge two, judge three. J Susie knows, but I don't know. So, but they're all, I look and I go, oh, seven, eight, seven, yeah, they're nine, looking six, consistent. nine, seven, six, seven, seven, yeah. six, seven. I mean, it just, yeah, that's nice, really close, very hard to, very hard to do. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And we we did some in and out, so I was happy. He was happy. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just saying. I'm just saying. But we well, did. She didn't, she didn't, we, yeah, she didn't like the way we do it. I said, "Is it in or is it out?" Just tell me. Is it in or out? <laughs> yeah. If no, it's I, in, I, that means the other one's automatically out. Well, see, that's what I argued. But I remember that. And I, you got shit for it too. I got big shit for it because I yeah. said it 
one of them is in and we don't need to judge the other one because by definition it's out oh no that's right we've <laughs> always done it right <laughs> yeah. oh my so then i started being really uh contrary and that's why i get so excited about in and out since it's um it's a holdover from being pissy about having to do the in and the out. <laughs> yeah, because yeah, then that really pissed somebody off a lot. Yeah. Well, yeah. the face of the club has changed. Uh, it has. Those <laughs> argumentative <laughs> people are, for one reason or another, no longer with us. None of us are cantankerous, except maybe me, but. Yeah. Well, yeah. The, but you're the, cantankerous the, in a different way. I think yeah, cantankerous in a different way. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> It's your really cantankerous cute. is usually directed toward yourself and not toward other members. And then towards everybody, I'm, I'm cantankerous with myself, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But th those people were just openly hostile to, to sometimes. Me. <laughs> well, to you uh, in particular, yeah. Oh. I've, got, I've got to say that's true. I think, I think you were the brunt. I think you were the brunt of it. At near, then that's about not too long after that, everybody else left, so. Yeah, well, wow. I was sorry to see you go, but I was really glad to see you come back, Don. Mm -hmm. I love your I love your perspective on things. You see yeah, things. Me like, too. Ah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I can't believe you saw the same story as Trish did. That was so cool. Oh, with the bicycles? Yeah. I my whole my story thought was completely different than what y'all said. And the fact that y'all were on the same page is pretty cool. Yeah. Well, mm -hmm. I looked at it and I thought it, I thought I thought that I thought. I didn't think it could be coincidence, but if that's what you really saw, I thought it was fabulous. Thank you. Yeah, I, I really thought that was fun and clever the way you set that up. Mm -hmm. Well, I couldn't read I mean, anything all really, along. It just all looked cool really unhappy. <laughs> all the people over there, everybody the rides movie. bicycles, and very seldom do you ever see a bicycle with a lock on it. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. They're leaning against posts, they're leaning against the side of the building, or they're all piled up in a corner. It doesn't matter. Hardly any of them ever locked. Everybody has their own bike because everybody rides a bike. Yeah, but there, there were some really, really strong images that were, it was tough when we did the rescores and the in and outs that to, to re you really had to think and pay attention and 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 felt really bad when you critiqued them because you knew somebody had to go <laughs> out and it didn't seem really fair. <laughs> they were all so close. Yeah, I think that's it boils down to we did this during I think it was a, a a print competition where we had all these really weird high scores, but the comments did not go with the score. Yeah. yeah. If you give a score and you end up with a 25 or a 26, you would expect to get 25 or 26 decent comments, not, oh, that's a good image. Who's the maker? That, that was kind of, uh, yeah. doesn't work. You needed to sit, sit there and talk about it. And we had some really good images with lots of good stories in them, mm -hmm. which I think, and that's what was cool about this, this competition. Well, and I will say that I do tend to sometimes be a little nitpicky in my comments. I think it's um, great. I just want to tell you, I think it's great, Donna, because well, that's that's how I learn something. When somebody's very, very specific, mm -hmm. it's really helpful. Yeah. So don't do not feel bad about that at all. Well, I hope that it's done in the spirit of it, it's not it's not a criticism, but an observation. Yeah. Um, yeah. And then, uh, so, but but I do know that sometimes I can be, um, I can I can come up with a constructive comment, and I know that not everybody really feels comfortable doing that necessarily. Yeah. Um, and and I don't know if everybody knows, but I do judge. So I'm a member of the Garden Club of America, which is a national organization, and I am a photography judge in that organization so i appreciate your insight for sure well yeah. they, when we, well and when we judge we if unless it wins a first place or if it's a really really strong second 
we do a positive comment and we do a constructive comment. Yeah. Um, which really gets you out there and, and, and getting comfortable with how to say that, you know, it could be enhanced or you're distracted by or those things instead of just saying it's a good image. Because right. well, that doesn't help anybody. I mean, I've had people say that about mine. It's a good image. And I'm like, well, what the hell? Yeah. That 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 is <laughs> that does me no good whatsoever. So um <clears throat> anyway. Yeah. One thing uh, I like the constructive I also, I'm sorry, go ahead. Uh, <laughs> one thing I liked about like the constructive criticism you're talking about is I remember, I can't remember the image, but long time ago. The way I saw this image is I thought I liked it. And then with the club, they told me their insights and it gave me a whole new perspective, never would have thought of. And then because of that, my images, you know, kept getting better and better and better. So just because one, and that's the other thing, just because one person says something to change, well, if you personally don't like it, that's all right. <laughs> And that's what well, I mean, and that. that's that's the, the, the thing that I've seen over the years. The people who have entered consistently mm -hmm. have gotten tremendously better. You know, there's just something about entering five images every month, you know, that really that really helps your photography. And I think the comments, like you're saying, Charles, are a big part of it. Yeah. You know, I, I whether they're right, whether they're wrong. Uh, you know, I, I think judging is part of the uh, is part of the whole process, too. You know, you have to learn to judge like you have to learn to be a photographer. And the only way you can learn to judge is just by being a judge, mm -hmm. you know, and sometimes it's uncomfortable for the first couple of times. In fact, I remember when we first started, Donna used to aid. She used to sit behind one of the new judges and she <laughs> would, you know, they would confer back and forth. <laughs> Right. And, uh, you know, that worked, that worked really well. That was a great suggestion, you know. I, I, was, I, was, I, was, I think I was one of the first ones she did, too. Mm -hmm. yeah. And, and if anybody wants to volunteer me. to judge, by all means, let us know. I think Steve, he, he selects judges or, or asks. If, uh, but if anybody wants to volunteer, by all means, you know, uh, mm -hmm. this is a learning club, you know. <clears throat> Part of learning is judging and like you guys say, we get better through the critique and learning how to judge. You get well, better I, at the photography and better at the judging. Uh, judging. You know, yes. The same. yes. I will say this is a different technique. When I when when I judge photography shows, we are on a panel and the panel comes to a consensus. You see all of the image and you discuss them and and you come to a consensus of how you're going to place them and what your comments are. And sometimes that, you know, I thought I knew exactly which one was going to be first. And after we talked about it, it's like, oh, yeah, no. You know, there were things that, that were pointed out that I didn't see, which I think in doing it this way, you stand alone in, in your scoring. Uh, and sometimes I think that if, had we talked about it, I might have scored it a little differently. I might have given it a stronger score. And sometimes after listening to other people's critiques, it's like, oh, maybe I was a little harsh on my judging. Or sometimes I think, well, maybe I was a little bit too lenient on my scores. Mm -hmm. uh, now, nobody knows that but me and, and which ones, but it is interesting doing it solo in, in a bubble. And then I don't want to say defend the score since it's a composite score, but you are critiquing it and what you saw. And it may not be what other people like. I mean, with Jack's photo of the bear, it was a darling bear and he was so cute. But the 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 processing of the creative part didn't quite fit for me, but it could have been somebody else's bag of chips and all of that so there is that subjective part to it mm -hmm. I, think, I, and look, I think it's good that you 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 came back to judging primarily because we all have gotten to the point where we know each other's work mm -hmm. 
we know, and, and therefore sometimes I can sit there and I go, this is Peter's, this is Robert's, this is Jack's, this is Steve's. I know whose picture is whose. So it's kind of hard to be subjective. If you know the person who took the picture, it's a good picture. They're all great pictures, but you've got to be able to distinguish the two. So what makes this one better than that one? That's what I have trouble with. I look and I go through, when, I mean, when Brian was trying to teach us the, the different steps of judging and the different categories of judging, there's only four or five in there that you have time to look at. You've only got a few seconds to look at a picture. You can't hard to sit there. But when we have time to comment, we have time, more time to look and more time to comment. We see things yeah. that we don't see when we're judging. So I think one of the things I did last night is I screwed up because I didn't tell you the titles. And I think if I had told you the titles <laughs> before you judged, you would have picked up on the bicycle thing. Okay, for instance. Well, what, what was that, the title of that? The pile up. It was a pile of bikes. Well, but and the whole story is why is there a pile of bikes? And I sit there and go, but it's because that's a bike shop. Well, no, I did it because it was a mural of people that were heading away from the bikes, and you had the one guy standing there going, "Oh my gosh, it's a, you know, we left a mess." So I didn't relate it to being a bike shop. I did. I, you know, I related to being a bike shop because that's how they pile the bikes at the bike shop. They're not parked out there in a nice neat row for the next one going in. They're all just thrown in there to here fix these. Uh, but I looked at the mural. I didn't see that in the mural because. What I saw in the mural were the people leaving, but if you look at it, that was a nightclub sitting there with a guy and a girl on a telephone in a phone booth and a guy standing outside waiting his turn, and the other people were walking away. I had nothing to do with bikes. Mm. The fact that it was a roll-up door that it was painted on and the bikes, I put two and two together and I said, bike shop. Now, is that true? I don't know. Yeah, I agree, though, on the title. Remember how I was questioning that infrared one since... I don't have much experience doing infrared. The title would definitely helped on that one. Yeah. Good night, Ben. Good night. Man. Good night. But I think with that, I'm going to go to sort of bed too. But I'll look forward to seeing y'all at the Christmas party. Okay, uh, two weeks. All right, everybody. No, two weeks. Everybody it was fun seeing everyone. You guys have a good mm -hmm. night. Yep. Thanks, y'all. Thanks, thank you. Well, thank you for doing Thanks, this. For it for sure. I enjoyed it. It was challenging, which is a good thing. That is, yeah, yeah, good thing. Good night. Come to a, come to a print thank competition, and that's that's challenging. Yeah, that's the. Oh, is is next month print? Yes. 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 Print, yes. Print. I just got a whole bunch of. <clears> I'm going to try out some refillable cartridges or something. We'll see from like precision colors. Oh, I I have that. Do you? Does it work? Well, it's interesting uh -oh. because <laughs> when I first bought my my uh, uh, Canon printer, you had to buy the Canon cartridges at seventeen dollars a piece. Yeah. There was no second party things. The only person who made cartridges for it was Precision, so I bought the whole kit. That's what I did. And as soon as it shipped to me, they came out with third party inks. <laughs> so I have never used them. They're all brand new in the. In, in the box, I've never refilled the I, oh. I've refilled the cartridges for my old Epson printer, and it was a mess and a pain in the ass. But, um, yeah, but anyway, yeah, now I just buy the four or five That's hilarious. card. Well, it, it just came in yesterday, so we'll see what happens. Is I got to do my uh yearly calendar I print for certain family members. All right, good night, guys. Good night, everybody. Good night. Oh, and what, what's what night, is the assignment for January? I don't know. Is it?